Actually, one of those would be... So we both, we both have preservation. Right? So one of them would be prophecies. Okay. The prophecies should be established prior to the event happening. Yeah. Cannot be changed or manipulated afterwards to fit what happened. Can you uh, tell me one? So one of them, we have Surat al-Rom, which is uh, the surah, the chapter called Rome. Okay. The Persians defeated the Roman Empire at that time. And the Quran said that within three to nine years, this is a term used in Arabic, which, which denotes a time between three to nine years, the Romans will once again conquer the Persians. Now, why is this a profound claim? It's a profound claim because there are many concepts, many aspects where the, the prophecy could have failed. Number one, it was counterintuitive because the Romans were defeated so badly by the Persians that it was expected that within a few years they would have been finished. There would be no Romans after that. That was the first thing. The second thing was that both of these armies actually were also ultimately defeated by the Muslims. So that could have happened before the Persians actually defeated the, the Romans. After uh, the Muslims beat, is it the Jews or the Romans? Yes. Sorry? The Jews or the Romans? So the, so the Muslims actually defeated both empires. Okay. They defeated the Persian Empire and the Roman Empire. Doesn't it say in a hadith that the Dajjal will come once they win that? No, no, but the, uh, when, when you look at the hadith, you have to be very careful, okay? Because you have to look at the Arabic, you have to look at what the hadith exactly is referring to. We never had a concept, uh, because in Christianity, uh, Paul said to the people, don't get married, don't do any trade, because he said the second coming of Christ was coming immediately. Yeah. We didn't have this concept with Dajjal. What we were told by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that his coming and the day of judgment or the day of D D Dajjal coming was as close as this. And he put his fingers together. Now what that means is that throughout history, you have many tens of thousands of years, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of years, right? And the, sec the coming of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, meant that the last day, the, the Yawm al Qayyamah, the sign, one of the signs, was that it's very close to the Day of Judgment. But it doesn't mean 10 years or 100 years. Nobody understood it like that. Okay. But my point to you is that yeah. the Quran makes certain predictions. The Quran touches on certain aspects of nature that a 7th century Arab, who was known to be illiterate by the people, even if he was the best of the scholars of the people at that time, he could never have made those would, would, would you argue that the uh, Bible has prophecies that have been fulfilled? Some that have and some that have failed. So, But the Quran doesn't yeah, fail, that's okay. the point. The so, point is, that, look, yeah, I no. believe that there are remnants of truth in the Bible. I believe that there are remnants of truth left in the Torah. Yeah. Okay? Why do I believe that? Because Allah tells me so. Allah says that these books were originally inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, Moses and to Jesus. I have no problem accepting that. Okay, so but we can establish, yeah. what we can establish, I think uh, empirically, that they're not preserved. So uh, on our first point of preservation, we can both agree that both of our books are I don't know about your book yeah. and, and its preservation. But from what I've told you. Uh, yeah, that's fine. If you, if, 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 let's say for argument's sake, yeah. it is preserved. Okay. On okay. the second point of the Quran having prophecies. Yes. I agree. Yes. But our, uh, if I gave you a claim that our book made right now, let's come true, would you believe that we both have prophecies that have been fulfilled? No, but I'll tell you why. Because remember, that, number one, it has to get every prophecy right. Mm -hmm. The prophecy has to be proven historically that the prophecy that was made came prior to the event. It made one um, prophecy that you has come true. You louder so we can also hear. A brother's got, br brother's got a very low, low voice, so yeah. he's, uh, he's, he's struggling. Uh, uh, so, so, so the thing, the point I'm trying to make to you here is this, that uh, to make a prophecy and it come true, there's a, 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 let's say, a balance of probability of any outcome that can happen. Yeah. I could make a prophecy today. Of course, yeah. And it could come true. Yeah. It doesn't mean I'm from God. Okay. It doesn't mean I'm a prophet. But the prophecy that was... Uh, the, but let me just yeah, get to that. Sorry, sorry. But the point is, if I make several prophecies, many of them are counterintuitive. 
they are completely opposite to what you would expect happen. And then they happen, and I never get it wrong. I think that holds, on balance of probability, yeah, yeah. it's a lot more probable well, course, yeah. that it hasn't come from me. That, that's, that's my point. Yeah. That's my point. So the claim that was uh, made in Dante's book was that another prophet would come in the 19th century who was bald and was called Anton. Yes. So who came in the 19th century? Yes. A guy called Anton LaVey, yes. who then wrote the Satanic Bible, yes. we believe is a prophet as well. Yes. Okay. So the one prophecy that is in our book is fulfilled. Yes. Um, so it is fulfilled. Yes. So can we both agree? No. We you, agree? you have a major problem there. I'll tell you why. First of all, you said 19th century. So you have a hundred years for a man called Dante. Uh, uh, you, well, if you said the 19th century, right? Uh, no, Dante was in the 13th. No, no, but he said in the 19th century. Yeah. So you have a span of time of a hundred years yes. for a man called Dante, Anton, who, Anton sorry, yeah. who is bald, yeah. and that's the prophecy. Now, I would suggest to you that there could have been a hundred Antons yeah. who were born in the 19th century who were also bald. But what one would get a divine revelation? No, nah, no, nah, but the point here is this now, that this Anton decided, hold on a second, I'm Anton and I'm bald. And if I now say that I have this, uh, I have this uh, divine inspiration, I will be believed so I could fulfill the prophecy. Yeah. You understand my point? I do, yeah. And so in that way, you would not regard that as a prophecy at all. You could have somebody who self uh, fulfills that prophecy, knowing that this is what they're looking for. In the cases that I'm giving you, it was completely counterintuitive. One party is defeated to almost extinction. Yes. The Quran is saying they will be the ones who will defeat the other. Okay? The Quran talks about aspects of nature. That a seventh century Arab could never have known or discussed. The Quran talks about the nature of man and what is good for man and what is bad for man. And throughout history till today, it's not only proven to be correct, but many things apply more today than they've ever even applied before. The ills of alcohol. Uh, drugs, uh, sexual immorality, okay, following Satan. All of these things for us are a warning. And when we follow these teachings holistically, they resolve and they sort out so many of the problems that society has today. Yeah. Family values, marriage. Okay. What was your name, sir? Abbas. 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 I, um, I still need to speak to Bob. Okay. So, can I make you a promise here? Yeah, yeah, of course. Are you here next week? Uh, we, we're here every four to six weeks. Okay. Yeah. So, I know but all I say uh, to you, all I say to you, yeah, look, yeah. is this, yeah? That when you truly study Islam with an open heart and an open mind, trust me, I have. I was born, I'm, I'm European, I was born in this country, right? If you study Islam with an open heart and an open mind, you can reach no other conclusion than this is from God and what it tells you is correct and what it tells you to stay away from is our protection. One of the things that we believe when, a, when, the, when the matter is settled on the day of judgment, when the people are being thrown into the hellfire, they will say to Satan, look at what you've done to us. People will say to Satan, Look at what you've done to us. Satan will say, don't blame me. I just called you and you responded. I had no power over you. I had no power over you. He will distance himself from those people. So what I would urge you, brother, is distance yourself from this satanic stuff and go to the one who created everything, including Satan. And if Allah wants, Allah can quash Satan in a second, if he wants to. Go to the all-powerful. Multiple gods, if you look at it logically, the Quran says if there was more than one creator, we would, they would outstrip one another. They would compete with one another. Yes. There would be chaos. 
all-powerful means that you have the ma complete control. You don't share your majesty with anything yeah. or anyone. Turn to that creator, not Satan, because that same Satan on the day of judgment, when the people are being dragged to hellfire, will tell the people, I had no power over you. I just called you, I summoned you, I whispered to you and you responded. Is, um, I do come to uh, Speaker's Corner to learn about Islam. Yeah. So Take my number. I will. If you want to have a conversation off the camera, more than welcome. Uh, uh, we've got copies of the Quran. Have you got a copy of the I Quran? Do. Yeah? Uh, you know, read the Quran. With open heart, open mind. I forgot, um, I had like so many questions about Islam, yeah. but I completely forgot to bring my... <laughs> That's okay. Nice today. Um, well, let's look, take my number. Yeah, okay. And if you want to honestly discuss these things. Yeah. But brother, my humble wish for you yeah. is this satanic stuff is very... Um, it's, it's got these rituals and these videos and it's, got, it's, and it's quite persuasive. But in reality, when you truly scrutinize the concepts with logical, logical footing, it's, you can never accept your brother. Okay. Um, I'm not going to get too much into no problem. it because there's, that's a different no problem. combination you're talking about. No, no problem. But I will take your number. Yeah, and I'll, 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 I'll give you my number. One simple question. Can I ask one question? Do you feel like... Uh, do you feel peace? Well, no, when preaching. Say in satanic, uh, satanic phases, do you feel peace when preaching? Or? Of course. <laughs>